Hi guys, my name's Simon. Welcome to this Building Church From Home video. We've been seeing virtual worship teams and bands and choirs on the internet and in our church services for months now. And maybe you've been wondering, how do I get that done? Well, this video is gonna help you put together the audio and the video assets you need to make a virtual group work with your musicians. So we're gonna start here looking at the tracks and how to make all the audio work. And then Marcus is gonna teach us a bit about how to pull the video together. One of the trickiest parts of having to do music virtually is that tempo is not given to us by a conductor or by hearing the musicians around us. So what we need to do is create a guide track. We're gonna take a look now at how to create a guide track to send that to your musicians, receive files back and layer that in a digital audio workspace so that you can start layering your tracks and create your virtual group. Okay, so the first thing we need to do, like we said, is set up a guide track. Now the guide track is this track here. I've got Rachel to actually play it on the piano and I'll let you hear what it sounds like. We'll start here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add tracks on top of this one. This is the guide that tells everybody else the tempo, but how do they know when to start, you might ask? Well, that's a great question. If I pull this track out this way, you can see that I've got Rachel to play four notes here. This is the start of every bar for four bars leading up to the start of the song. So let's listen to that as well. Two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, and. So by listening to that four bar count in, they'll be able to hear when they need to start. So this is the track that you will send to all your musicians. This track is not one that you want to hear on their recordings. So they're going to wear an earpiece or um, wear a set of headphones as they record and you don't hear the guide track. You just want to hear their instrument, but they need to be listening to this as the guide. That's why I call it a guide track for what they're recording. Remember, a guide track can be played by any instrument that is playing the whole way through the piece. If the guide track drops out, then we lose a bit of tempo and people have to guess where things are. Uh, you can also embed a click track on top of the instrument that's playing. So that would have a click on every beat of the bar um, and you do that inside a digital uh, audio workspace uh, like Pro Tools that I was showing you before. If you can't create a guide track, you can just send the metronome marking uh, or the tempo marking to people and they can pull an uh, online metronome up on their phone and listen to that as they play. This is not the best way to do it, but you can do it this way if you have to. Okay, so you can see that I've added my tracks. I've got a bass guitar track here, a guitar track. I've got some drum tracks up here. You can see the percussion. And down here, there's some brass. And I still, still think I have my vocals hidden somewhere but we won't worry about that so you can see that this is a full group you've got brass you've got rhythm section piano this is how you would layer your audio for any group your brass your songsters or choral groups or your worship teams this is what it's going to look like so here's my guide track you can see the four bar counting that Rachel gave us and because I know from looking at the music that a bunch of these instruments start on the downbeat of the first bar I lined them all up with the start of Rachel's first bar. So that helped me line up all of these parts across the board. So let's have a listen with the four bar counting and see what happened. Okay, so there we go, we've started the song. It wasn't perfect straight away, uh, just as it might not be when you're playing in church on Sunday morning. And if it's really out of uh, sync, what you can do is you can nudge some of, the, some of the sounds around. So this one here actually originally came in a little bit early. If those two were still connected, that's what it would look like. And when we listen to that, so you could hear him coming in a little bit early. So I just took a little bit of sound out there, took a little bit of sound out there, and this one was out of time, but this one came back in at the right tempo and it caught up. So because we're recording virtually, we need to help our musicians out sometimes and just do a little bit of editing to help make sure everything is lined up really well. Um, sometimes 
if you try and edit a whole line, you might nudge all of these back. So if I move this one back a little bit, you see I've moved all of them and now they're all gonna be out of time. So I'm just gonna undo that. And so we need to make sure that what, we, what I've done here is take some space from either one so that I'm just moving this clip. I'm not moving the ones around it. Uh, that way we're not gonna affect the whole line. Another way I like to line up my recordings is sometimes by looking at the end, the last note. Uh, you can see that there's a big ending here. So I can line a lot of these up by that dum 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 Da, there, that's that last note. And we can see they're not quite all lined up, but they're pretty close. And I can get those in a line across all the instruments. So drums all the way down to my uh, brass instruments. And some, some notes are hanging all the way through there. So I can't do that. The tricky thing is with the cutoffs, we've got to make sure that all the music ends at the same time. So that's fairly close. I had to actually fade some of these instruments so that they finished around the same time as the others. Okay, so here we are in our mix window. You can see all the different tracks and the different levels that the different instruments are at. So some instruments are bumped up a bit more than others. And what we've got to look for is a balance, just like we would when we're playing together live. So let's listen to the mix. So we've got to make sure we understand what are our most important instruments. So we want to have our melody being heard in our cornet or the instrument that carries the melody. We want our bass section to be nice and uh, prominent, rooting the sound of the chords and then make sure, making sure that we've got our balance throughout the rest of our instruments. If we push one instrument too high, then they're going to dominate the sound and it's going to sound out of place. So let's just have a listen. All I want with joy so So our horn there is really out of context, it's way too high. We're going to put him back in and have a listen to how it sounds now. So the melody is actually with the trombones in this section. But even there, with the melody instrument being quite high, the main thing is the lyrics. People worship through the lyrics of songs, so we want to make sure that the trombone is back at a volume. We want to make sure the trombone is back at a volume where it's supporting the melody, but not taking over because someone is singing on this track. If there was no singing, we'd want to make sure that we move the uh, trombone sound up there because that's the melody. Getting a good balance across your mix means just listening through. You want to make sure that every part can be heard, but that they're not too dominating of the melody. We also want to make sure that uh, we put in some reverb. What reverb does to virtual recordings is give it some space that combines the sounds. You don't know what somebody has recorded their music on or where they've recorded it. Having the ability to add some reverb to these tracks will just unify how they sound. Let's listen to the brass without any reverb. Still sounds good. There's lots of good players playing there, but it uh, sounds like there's a bunch of different kind of spots that they're playing in and it sounds very flat. Let's try putting that reverb in and see what it does to the sound. It gives some room around the sound. It's not quite so flat. It gives some depth. So it makes them seem like they're all playing in a similar, if not the same space. Uh, that's the beauty of adding that reverb in. 
One thing that I wanted to show you just to be conscious of when we're doing a vocal recording is that one of the really difficult things as we finish our words is unifying the sound. So a word like Jesus finishes on an S and that's really hard when we're recording virtually. So here, if we look here, we've got a couple of people finishing their S's at different times. If I roll this audio out here, you can see look, there's S's there, there, there. They're all at different spots along the timeline. So what I did was actually clip some of these. So some people are still actually in the I sound of their, what a beautiful name it is. They're still in that I sound in the I vowel, but other people were already into their S. So what I could do is just cut it off to try and make it sound uniform. You can see there that not everybody's finished singing the word, but we've got a pretty uniform sounding is cut off. Um, the tricky part of singing, especially without other people in the room, is that you don't know when the cutoff is going to come. You can tell by the music, but everybody's interpretation of where the tempo is will be just a slightly different. And on some words like is or Jesus, it uh, can sound a little bit messy. So that's just a nice way you can clean up some of your choral stuff if you have to do that. Also, we need to be conscious when we export our audio that we have it at a good level so that it can be heard properly without people having to turn up and down their sound on their computer or their TV as they listen, but also that it's not too loud and it's gonna clip or create distortion when we put it into our video. Speaking about video, Marcus is gonna take over now and show you how to finish off this project. So before I edit the audio, I will generally import all the videos and the audio that goes along with those videos into the video editing software, making sure that all the videos are lined up and synced to some degree um, with the guide track I provided them with. Then once it's all lined up, you can go edit your audio like Simon has outlined already for us. Be meticulous, be masterful, get it just right. After you've edited the audio, you export that audio as one track and bring it into your video software that you've already lined up the videos to some degree to that guide track. You can then replace all the other audio tracks with that one audio layer that is now synced up to the guide track. Now you can eliminate your guide track and you have one audio layer for all these videos. Now you need to display all your people. Assuming that you've gone with just one video for each person's take, you haven't used multiple takes or multiple performances, you can now just simply crop and adjust the size of each person's video into the video layout. So there's a basic overview of how to put one of these projects together. The more you do it, the faster you'll find yourself at maneuvering through Pro Tools, Adobe Premiere Pro, those types of programs. But if you find yourself stuck, feel free to reach out to Simon or I and we can help guide you along this process. Mm -hmm.